how to check that your calculator is in degree mode and why this works. So, the fastest way to check whether or not your calculator is in degree mode versus radians mode or maybe even gradients mode is to put in tangent of 45 and see what happens. So if I take a calculator that's turned on, I find my tangent button, it's right here, and just put in 45. And if I get a long string of numbers like this after the one, it is in radians mode. But if my calculator is in degrees, on this one it's second, set up, and then choose three for degrees, but this varies by calculator. Then if I put in the tangent of 45, I will instead get one, instead of one and some things. So a good habit to get into Whenever you're using a calculator that you're not entirely sure what the settings are for some reason, maybe it's one you share with somebody else, maybe it's one you don't use regularly, maybe you can't remember what you used last, just type in tangent and see which of these you get, and if it's not the one you need, then change the setting on the calculator. So, now I'm going to go into why this works. First, we need to talk just a little bit about what a radian is, even if maybe that isn't a part of your math class. So let's zoom this out a little bit so that we can look at this picture. This is what's called a unit circle. But right now the important thing about it is that we can talk about how many degrees it takes to go around a circle. If I start here and I spin all the way around the circle, that's 360 degrees. So there are 360 degrees in a circle. But this circle also lists radian measurements. And if I spin all the way around the circle in radians, and this one would be in the same place as the other one. It does not matter where I'm doing my spinning. The important thing is how much I rotated. That would be 2 pi. And that comes back to the idea of the circumference of a circle being 2 pi times the radius. And you will learn about that in more depth in a class that teaches you about radians. But if you're not in that class yet, you can think of it as being very similar to how on a typical ruler, I will have inches and I will also have centimeters. And it matters which I use when I'm measuring something. If I measure a line here in inches, this line is three inches long. If I try to measure it again in centimeters, it is almost eight centimeters long. So those are very different numbers from each other. And it's important that I'm consistent in which one I'm using when I'm doing a given problem, and that if I'm given measurements, I use the same measurements as I'm given because otherwise I will be measuring things the wrong size. So that's why it's important to make sure you're in degrees rather than radians, and you do not need to know a whole lot about radians unless that's part of your math class. But make sure that tangent is equal to 1. The tangent of 45 specifically is what's equal to 1. So you might be wondering why? Why is the tangent of 45 equal to 1 when so many tangents are just like long decimal numbers. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about special triangles. So that is a line that's three inches long and I'm going to now make a square. And I'm not going to use my compass and construct the square properly. Apologies to those of you who are looking forward to that because I don't need that for what I'm specifically doing next. 
So this is simply going to be an approximate square rather than an exact square. But this is a square. This particular square is three inches on a side. And these are all 90 degree angles. This particular one may not have precise 90 degree angles because I did not construct it using proper construction methods, but we are going to assert that these are all 90 degree angles and I will mark them as so. Now, if I cut this square in half, if I make a diagonal here, we can use some of our known properties of squares to see what will happen. Clearly, this is still 3 inches. This is still 3 inches. Those are also still 3 inches. But I've got a triangle right here. And we can figure out a little more about this triangle. We know, because these legs are the same, that this is an isosceles triangle. And in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are equal. So I know this angle and this angle have to be the same because it's an isosceles triangle. Well, this is 90 degrees, so each of these have to be 45 degrees because there are only 90 degrees left to share among the other two angles of a right triangle, so if they're going to be equal, they each have to be exactly half of 90 degrees, and half of 90 degrees is 45. So now I've got a right triangle with 45 degree angles. So the tangent of this specific right triangle, well, I mean, I'd have to pick an angle. Let's pick this 45 degree angle here. It doesn't matter which one I pick for what I'm about to do. But if I want the tangent of this 45 degree angle, let's call this one x, that would be opposite, which is 3, over adjacent, which is also 3. Since I have the same number on the top and the bottom, that means that it's going to equal 1. So in this case, the tangent of this 45 degrees is 1. And this wouldn't work with radians because I wouldn't have 90 degrees here, and so I wouldn't have the 45 and the 45 left here. Instead, I'd be measuring that in radians. And so instead of adding up to 180 degrees, a triangle would add up to pi radians, and this would be pi over 2, and each of these would be pi over 4. So those numbers would just be different, and that's why putting in 45 radians would not get me the same result, because I'd be looking up the result for a different measurement. In the same way that if I was told I needed to go three miles from my house and I went three kilometers from my house instead, I'd end up someplace different. So this is true for any right isosceles triangle. It doesn't matter that that's three. Three divided by three is one. If we zoomed this in or out so that it was instead two and two, or one and one, or seven and seven, or x and x, as long as it's the same number both times, these 45 degree angles will always have a tangent of 1 because tangent of 45 degrees would be the opposite over the adjacent. There's my opposite, there's my adjacent. x divided by x would be 1. So that's why this works. And we call this 45-45-90 triangle a special triangle. 
because it has this property and because those sides match. But that's why this works. <laughs>